looking face to face with that circumstance, so that circumstance with the enemy, and say, You are not crossing this line, you are not bringing this sickness in, and therefore, this you are taking your stand. You. I speak what the word of God says. You've heard people say, Well, I love my car, I just love this car. I just love this house. <laughs> I just love. The Bible tells us in 1 John 2 15, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And so, when we speak from God's perspective, we speak based on the mind of God concerning things, people, and circumstances. So as a believer, you don't say, I love my car. You don't say, I love my house. You don't say, oh, I just love this dress. Or I love this thing. I love this soup. I love this dish. <laughs> the Bible says, love not the world. That are the things that are in the world. So how do you speak of those things? In 1 Timothy, Paul tells us how we should speak of those things. Amen? I said amen. And this is just an example. There are many areas and many facets we need to find out the way God thinks about things. 1 Timothy 6, 17. It says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in unsenting riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. God gave you that car to enjoy, not to love. God gave you that big mansion to enjoy, not to love. God brought that palatable delicious jollof rice dish <laughs> plate of jollof rice for you to enjoy not to love God gave you that suit, that dress to enjoy the use of it, not to love and so you don't say I love my car I just love this car I enjoy this car you say I enjoy using this car I just, I, I'm just enjoying this car. Hallelujah. When you are speaking like that, you are speaking the way God is speaking. You are speaking from God's perspective. There are only two persons we are to love in this world. We are to love God and to love people. Any other thing we don't love. We don't even love angels. We enjoy their services. I you understand what I'm talking about here. Is it we enjoy their services? We don't love angels. We only love God and people. Hallelujah. That may look strange to some, but that is the scriptures. Amen. And so you enjoy your job, you enjoy life, you enjoy good health, you enjoy, you enjoy the car, you enjoy your marriage, you enjoy, you enjoy the, the, the mansion. You just enjoy these things. God says that he gives us richly all these things to enjoy. He gives them to us richly, abundantly to enjoy. Glory to God. That is why I said those who are rich in this world, they should not be high-minded. They should not lift up themselves above others. Because all these good things, God has given them to all of us richly to enjoy. So even the man, the, the believer that looks poor, does not have to be poor. He doesn't have to because God gives us all these things richly to enjoy. Glory to God. I said glory to Jesus. Amen. Listen, as you speak the way God speaks, you start to enjoy the results of heaven. You start to enjoy the results of God. And that helps to keep your heart in tune with God. When you are speaking contrary to God's perspective, your heart will be drawn away from God. Words draw our hearts 
So if you are speaking contrary to God's word, for example, you say, I love my car, what happens is that you become the lover of this world. Your heart will be drawn to worldliness. But if you see your car or the house as something to enjoy, which God's word says, it doesn't take your heart away from God because you know that it is God that gave you the car, the house to enjoy. So your heart is always with God. But if your heart, because love is of the heart, if you say, I love my car, then your heart goes to your car. Your heart goes to that house. But if you enjoy the car, you know that it is God that gave you that car to enjoy. It's God that gave you that house to enjoy. Glory to God. It's God that placed you in that marriage to enjoy. 